but it just crucified Jesus days before. The fear that death is coming to these disciples as well because they knew Jesus. They believed in Jesus. They loved Jesus. The disciples retreat to what they feel is a safe place in the community that they know. Secluded from the outside world, the doors are locked. But in this closed off house, behind locked doors, Jesus appears with the greeting of peace be with you. Now this was a casual greeting back in this time period, almost as if to say, hello, how are you? But Jesus spoke these words, and it was not a casual moment. It was a peace that was needed in the time of fear. As the scars were revealed to the disciples, the promise of peace is given. The promise that the risen Lord is indeed among them. And that fear and death did not get the final say. A peace that leads to rejoicing. And this promise is reassured the second time as Jesus says to them again, Peace be with you. But he doesn't end it there because he proceeds to give them a commission. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And with this sending forth, there is another promise. Sending the disciples into the world. But they are not to go alone. Because Jesus has breathed on them. Giving them this breath of life. As they are to receive the Holy Spirit. Just as the Creator God breathed life into humanity in Genesis, here we see this image again. It is Christ who defeated sin and death and did not let the corrupt world have the final say. It is love, giving the breath of life to the disciples so that they may not be alone in their sending because the Holy Spirit is with them. Peace be with you. We cannot remain in the house with the doors locked. We are a sent people to go into the world sharing this gospel of love. Sharing the love of God to all so that all may believe. And we later hear in the story that doubt is not completely diminished because we see Thomas struggling. And Thomas also gets a bad reputation for not believing the other disciples because he too wants to see. He too is in need of that peace. Longing to see the scars because that is the only way he can comprehend. <laughs> he sees the corruption how the crucifixion took place, and he saw the hurt. And he needs to believe that it is true, that Christ is risen indeed. He wants the same opportunity the other disciples had with Jesus. He is in need of this blessed peace. And Jesus' response to Thomas is this. Peace be with you. Inviting Thomas to touch the nail marks, to witness the resurrection of Christ. Jesus' ministry was one of healing touch, and for Thomas, it was a healing touch that restored his belief. And Jesus welcomes this with peace, because Thomas was in desperate need for peace. This peace was assuring. This peace was inviting. Jesus knows his disciples well. And Jesus knew that for Thomas, the touch was needed for the peace within his life to be restored. So we have this notion of blessing, of the blessing of peace. It's commanded in a way to provide calm to the chaos. 
to assure the disciples that what they know, what they believe, is true. It reminds me of the song that we sang at Vacation Bible School this past summer. And if you do volunteer for Vacation Bible School, you know that you are in need of peace as well. But it's a song the children love to sing, and a song I'm sure many of you know. I've got peace like a river. I've got peace like a river. I've got peace like a river in my soul. Peace like a river. But you know, I don't know how much time you've spent with rivers in your life. I'm not even sure where the closest river to Wilson is. But there are days when the current is smooth and steady. It's flowing easily. And there are days when the current is swift and pulsing and waters are raging as the river is in a hurry to get where it's going. On the smooth days and on the rough days, the river is always moving. The waters seeping into all it touches, flowing over waterfalls, crashing into rocks, swirling and spreading into larger bodies of water. Peace longs to move. It is meant to be shared. Peace be with you. And this is not the first time peace is mentioned for Jesus. The prophets foretold of the Prince of Peace. The angels proclaimed the birth of Jesus, saying, Peace on earth and goodwill towards men. And Jesus tells them, even in preparation for the crucifixion, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. And we can see that in Jesus' ministry, there is a raging river of peace that has come to engulf the world in love, that called out the disturbances within the world, the peace that reached for the oppressed, the hurting, the stranger, and said, you are welcome, and you are loved. Jesus brought peace for all. Because there is love for all. Peace be with you. And it was not meant to be taken lightly. What was once seen as a casual greeting gave new life and gave assurance to the disciples in this dark room, surrounded by fear. Peace be with you. Because Christ is risen indeed, and there is new life. The once severed relationship of pain and hurt within the fallen world had been redeemed through the sacrifice and has a hold of us no more. Peace be with you because you will need it. Because you are a sent people to proclaim this gospel. Because this gospel of love cannot be contained behind closed, locked doors. And there will be moments in our lives that are going to make us want to lock our doors. Like the authorities that had the disciples frightened, there are forces in this world that try to stop this gospel of love. The fear that strikes us into paralyzation, driving us into a closed room, saying, lock your doors. There's sickness, and there's hurt. And there is loss and unbearable pain. So we flee away from the outside world because it is unknown. And in this closed room, much like the disciples felt, we believe it is the only place we can find security. And I'm not here to say we will never feel fear or anxiousness again. We know the history of the apostles. 
the radical message of the gospel that the early Christians faced death for because they did believe. We know what happened to the disciples when they left that room. We know that Christians today face the same tragic loss around the world. Jesus did not say, peace be with you, because it will be easy. Jesus told them out of love, and because Christ knew to bring, the, to bring peace into the world and harmony, they would need this peace. They would need this guidance of the Holy Spirit every step of the way. We cannot remain locked up behind closed doors in our moments of fear and uncertainty. Because Jesus has risen indeed. And just as Jesus didn't tell those disciples to stay in that room, so too are we to go into the world. <laughs> Knowing that we are not alone, but have the Holy Spirit sustaining us. The intimate breath of life set into motion to remind us of the loving sacrifice that brings about peace in this world. We are called to share this gospel, to do the work of Christ in a way that brings about peace not only for ourselves, a peace for every being. A peace that leads to salvation, to harmony, to prosperity for all. The peace that is not only a still, small voice, but the raging, roaring river that envelops all it touches. This is the peace the risen Christ now greets his disciples with. This we know and we find in and through Christ. We have peace like a river in our souls. Peace be with you.